Dreamworm Observatory. Welcome to Backyard Astronomy. Today we're going to talk a little bit about, and we're going to continue our conversation a little bit about calibration frames. But today we're going to talk about how to make a light box. Stick around, it might get interesting. All right, usually the, the three ways that people try to do uh, flat frames is uh, you can take a t shirt and put it over the end of your telescope. Uh, now, you got to put that on correctly. I'm not going to go into all how to do that because that's not my way of wanting to do it. Now, you can put a t shirt over top of the end of the telescope and you can point it towards the sky, and usually in the dawn sky, the early morning sky and because uh, the light is pretty even at that time and you can go ahead and you can shoot your flat frames the problem with that in my opinion is if i shot last night and now i've got to wait till morning to do my flat frames and all of a sudden i wake up and it's raining or it's super cloudy or something i've got to wait uh forever to ever do anything with my my telescope supposing tonight i've got something i want to do and i, and I need to set things up well to me that's not a choice uh, uh not my favorite choice uh, another one is what they like to do is they like to point at a, a wall that they've lit up evenly. Now you got to light it evenly. Uh, a, a nice clear wall, and usually a, probably white, I guess you would say. And uh, that method there, I, if you look around my observatory, I don't have any white walls out of blue. Uh, and, and it's plywood, so it's not it's not perfect. Uh, maybe a sheet block wall might work out. Uh, but I, I'm not going to do it just for that. So my choice is a light box. Now what I, I come up with was years ago I used to do animation and uh, yeah, for cartoons. I just I just did it on my own, and I made myself a light box so I could use tracing paper and, and, and do this. Well, it was a crude thing, but it's not practical to use for this. Well, I got to thinking, you know, I should be able to make something for that. I got to looking around it. It's going to cost me more in materials than it did anything. I got looking on Amazon, and Amazon's got some of these things on there. They're, they're like drawing boards. They're traceable, trace where you trace on them, and they're, uh, they're lit, lit up real good. You got multiple levels of light and all kinds of things, uh, and you can get different sizes. So that sounds like a thing for me. So now, you can even if you had a small scope, you can put, get one that's small for that, you can get a little bigger one and all. The one I bought was a uh, A3 size. That's uh, in photography. That would be a, a size because A3. Now the box itself. No, well, it's, it's just call it a pad. The pad itself measures about 18 by 14 by 0.4. That's that's pretty thin, and and it's, and it's glass, but it's real real lightweight. And it works out to be about this big and about like this. Now, that's because I've got an SCT, and my SCT, uh, the outside diameter uh, of the cover that I put on the end of it is almost 12 inches. So I needed some room there. Uh, and, I, and I'll show you why. So my choice of how to make uh, flats would be with a light box. Okay. Now what I'm going to show you is this is already I've already put this together. Now I want you to see this. This white piece in here, and you see this black edge right here. This is how big that is. This is it's a square, it's a square drawing board. And it's made, uh, I said it's glass, but I think it's really acrylic or something because I, as much as I've banged it around, it hasn't broken. And I, I've been pretty lucky with that. Now, I've got it mounted in this. My intentions were to show you how to mount it, but uh, I couldn't get it apart because I put it together with uh, that hot glue. Now, I'm going to show you what I've got here. If you'll look at it, so look at these edges. I don't know if you can actually see this, but uh, I have one, two, three, four pieces. Four pieces. Now you can buy. This is not very expensive. I bought this at at a something like a dollar store. Each one of these pieces was a, a dollar sheet. 
Now, they weren't this size. They were bigger, but I couldn't get two of them. I think, well, I might have gotten two. No, I could not get two out of them. Each one of them I produced, I bought four pieces. It cost me four bucks. Uh, I paid a dollar a piece for them, and I cut them to fit. Now, this edge comes about right here, and this one comes down about here. Now, what you got to do is what I did was I didn't want this to be so flimsy. So I took two pieces and, and mounted, stuck them together, glued them together, and made a base. Then I took two more, and I took the cover off of my telescope. Now, this is off the, the far end, off the objective end. And uh, this is what goes on the end. And I put it right on top of this board, and I drew a circle, and I cut it. Now, I would suggest you do two pieces. I did two pieces, and you'll see why in a minute. And then I glued them together. Now, and you also, at the same time, you've got to go and leave your room. Because there's your switch, and there's your power. So you got to have some way to, do, to, to hook them up. So you got to cut that out, which is what I did. Now, this will plug in to a wall outlet, or you can put an adapter on it, which comes with it. You can put the adapter on it, uh, we'll take the adapter off, and plug it into your computer. Well, if you'll know my observatory, which I, you've seen already, the main observatory is another room. This is what I call a warm room. So this works both ways. So in, when I make the telescope, I can actually hook this on and plug this into the wall works like a champ. Now, you can also you want to run your wire, a USB wire out there, which I hadn't even thought about. I guess you could actually do that and it worked fine. Just plug it right in. But I have so many things plugged into my computer running my telescope that I don't need no more. All right. Okay. That's what we got there. Now, I'm going to show you. Now, you need to get a good look at this. I'll try to see that ring in there. I'll try to fix this where you can see it. And there's your controls and then your wires on it. And it's just solid foam board. It's foam boards. All it is. It's nothing to it. It cost me four dollars to put this together. Now this other piece in here, I'm thinking of somewhere between 45 and 50. I, I can't remember how much it was. Uh, when they got some different prices. Whatever one you want. Okay, so let's let's go to the telescope and see what it looks like. Okay. What I've done is I've turned the telescope around because I like this room lit up in the daylight. It makes it look blue in here. It matches my scope. Okay, I want to show you. Now, this is this is the cover that goes on my mirror, just like this. Now, this mirror is bigger than the scope. So that's why you want to use this. Um, what I did, so you won't be forcing anything on your lens anywhere or in, on, your, on your corrector plate. Uh, I just want it to, I want it to hang on it. Now, what you need to do is, uh, if you're going to do something like this, uh, when you get through shooting your pictures, uh, you, you, uh, all your photos, you need to leave everything exactly the way you used it. Be sure to review that calibration video. It tells you very definitely in there how to do that. Now, uh, you want to lock it down. Now, if you're going to use the method I'm using, you'll probably want to leave this tilted up to about 45 degrees or something. You'll see why in just a second. Now, this is this is uh, the box that we made, and like I said, it's very lightweight. Now, what you would want to do. You want to take this and you want to turn this on and you want to hang it just like you see, just like that. Now, then you go to your computer and you do your work. Now, let me, let me explain something to you. What I would do with this is uh, if I'm going to shoot it in this direction, Leave it there and shoot this just like I just showed you. I would just stop it, cut the power off, leave it, put it in a position like this. Even if it's pointing the other way, it doesn't matter. Just be sure not to move it. Cut it off and then put everything on it and, and let it rip. I'll hook the power up to it to see what it looks like.
Okay, I got some power hooked to this now. So let's see what we're doing. Remember, you want to use this to hang it with. You want to hang it right on the telescope. Now, you can go ahead and do this this way if you want. Uh, I kind of like to go ahead and turn my light on. Now, just so you know, it's got, you see it gets brighter. It has three positions. It has, this is the one I like to use, and you can get brighter than all you want. Now, you have to decide which way you like it. This is the way I like it. You put this on, and let it hang right on there. Just like that, that's all you need to do. Go to your computer, do your shooting, shoot out by how many you want, and stack them and do all that. But uh, it takes very little time to do this. Very convenient little thing. Okay, that's not very hard to do. In fact, once you've made your box, or we call it a light box, once you've made that, it's a breeze. Now, when you go to make your flats there be sure to review that video uh the calibration video because i there's some things that you really need to know you really and with my camera i'm looking for somewhere uh in a mean of twenty three thousand to twenty six thousand uh, your manufacturer has a number if you go on a website you can find the number that your camera requires you to be able to do to make a flat now, you may have to adjust that number a little bit. Not a problem. Video tells you about how to do it. I, I, I took care of that. Um, remember, it's not the number at the top that you're looking for. Um, about, it's not like point something seconds that you're trying to do. I can't tell you what that is. That determines. That is determined by what you've got set up on your telescope, what you've added or taken away from or whatever. The number you're looking for is the one that's down there in that little chart I showed you that says mean. That's the number you're looking for, regardless of how long it took you to get it. Just like, for instance, if you're using the second or the third level of the light, the amount of exposure up there is going to be different. It's going to be a lot quicker. Uh, but you're still looking for that 23. That's why I like to use a low one. That way I've got me some room to play with until I, I get it like I want it. And once you figure out what that is, that's the number you need every time. And how do you find that out? When we do uh, post-processing, or well, actually pre-processing, when we, when we start doing pre-processing, I will bring that up and show you how to determine what that number is. But for, for right now, it's somewhere between 23 and 26 for my thousand for my camera, but it may be different for yours. Okay, that's going to cover it for now. I think we've pretty much covered that. Uh, there has been questions about about that, so I wanted to clear that up. So until next time, if you like what you saw, click like below. And if you if this is your first time looking, you have not subscribed, go ahead and hit subscribe down there and hit that bell. That's the only time you got to do it. It's the first time you subscribe. Um, so until next time, clear skies and keep looking up.